In this video, we are going to look at the categories of skeletal muscle fibers. So skeletal muscle fibers are the ones that contract and move our skeleton, and they can be divided into slow twitch, intermediate, or fast twitch fibers. So we're going to look at how we categorize those, and is based on their velocity, how quickly can they contract, and also how do they make energy. Slow twitch fibers are also called slow oxidative, because how they make ATP is through oxidative phosphorylation. And that is when we go through the glycolysis process, then pyruvate oxidation, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. And then we can make a lot of ATP using oxygen. Okay, so that's our slow twitch fibers. And the fast fibers are also called fast glycolytic because of how they make ATP. They are primarily going to use anaerobic respiration where you just use glycolysis, you produce pyruvate, but then you produce lactic acid. Okay, and then intermediate filaments are called oxidative glycolytic. So they're fast oxidative glycolytic because they can use both. Basically, the intermediate fibers are a subtype of fast twitch fiber. So they can use the glycolytic pathway, but they can also use the oxidative phosphorylation pathway. So the intermediate fibers have a mixture of characteristics of the slow twitch and the fast twitch fibers. I think the easiest way to learn about the slow twitch and the fast twitch fibers is to think about a chicken. Because when you eat chicken, sometimes you like the dark meat and sometimes you like the white meat. Right, so the dark meat is the legs and the thighs, and the white meat is the chicken breast. And these are slow twitch fibers and fast twitch fibers. So if you like the dark meat, you like the slow twitch fibers. And if you like the white meat, then you like the fast twitch fibers. If you think about a chicken, it walks around on its legs all day long. Those are slow twitch fibers because the chicken can walk around not exerting a ton load of energy. Those muscles are not contracting super fast, right? I, I mean, they can run a little bit, but generally. So slow twitch fibers can use that oxidative phosphorylation pathway, aerobic respiration, so using lots of oxygen, there's lots of blood flow, and you can do an activity for a long period of time. Whereas the white meat, the fast twitch fibers, maybe once in a while a dog gets in the chicken coop and then the chickens have to flap at a very quick rate, but they can't do that for very long. So there are characteristics about each type of fiber, how long they can last, how quickly they can contract, and generally what kinds of muscles in our body would have higher proportions of faster slow fibers. Okay, so let's first look at our slow twitch muscle fibers. These are sometimes called type one muscle fibers. They are the dark meat, our chicken legs, because they are small diameter, dark colored, they look red, because they have an increase in a molecule called myoglobin. Myoglobin is like hemoglobin in our blood that carries oxygen, and it carries oxygen in our muscle tissue, so there's always a lot of oxygen available for aerobic respiration or oxidative phosphorylation. And where does oxidative phosphorylation occur? It occurs in mitochondria. These are the organelles where we have the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. So slow twitch fibers contract slowly, but they are resistant to fatigue. Because we can use all kinds of oxygen and have aerobic respiration, these muscles can contract for much longer periods of time. So you can walk for a long period of time compared to how long you can sprint. So think of aerobic activities, things that you could do for a long period of time. You know, more than 10 minutes would be considered primarily using slow twitch fibers. The last thing that I wanted to point out is that there are more blood vessels in slow twitch muscle fibers, in fibers that have a higher proportion of slow twitch fibers. Every muscle has all three fiber types. 
every skeletal muscle has all three fiber types and it's the proportion of those fiber types in each muscle that determine if that muscle is generally more of a slow twitch fiber muscle or a fast twitch fiber muscle. So muscles that would have more slow twitch fibers would be in your legs if you do a lot of endurance kind of exercises, right? A marathon runner has more slow twitch fibers in their legs compared to a sprinter. So the proportions of those fibers differs in different types of muscles and in different people. And it depends on your genetics and it depends on your training. So now if we go over here and we look at the fast twitch fibers, fast twitch fibers are also called type 2B and the intermediate fibers are also called type 2A. With the fast fibers, now the diameter of those fibers is much larger there is less blood flow, there's less blood vessels in the fast twitch fibers. And fast twitch fibers have a white appearance. This is our chicken breast. These fibers are primarily using glycolysis or the glycolytic pathway. So these are the fast glycolytic fibers because they are not using the oxidative phosphorylation pathway. So these are primarily anaerobic. So this means that they are using the glycolysis pathway and then the pyruvate is being formed, but then instead of going on to pyruvate oxidation in the Krebs cycle, that pyruvate is going to be converted into lactic acid. So when you are doing an activity and you feel your legs are burning, you know that you're making lactic acid and you're using more of your fast twitch fibers. So where does glycolysis occur? Glycolysis does not occur in the mitochondria, it occurs in the cytoplasm. So the proportion of mitochondria in fast twitch fibers is much lower than the number of mitochondria in slow twitch fibers. So the number of mitochondria is going to be decreased and the amount of ATP that can be produced, the total amount of ATP is much less. So that means that these muscle fibers are going to fatigue much more rapidly. And these fibers appear white because they do not contain myoglobin. And then lastly, our intermediate fibers are going to have characteristics of both. Intermediate fibers have an intermediate diameter. So we can see that they are a bit bigger than the darker slow twitch fibers and a bit smaller than the larger fast twitch fibers. They can use both oxidative phosphorylation and the glycolytic pathway. So they can be partly aerobic and partly anaerobic. So they can exert more force than the slow twitch fibers, but not quite as much as the fast twitch fibers. They have an intermediate amount of myoglobin. There's a little bit of myoglobin. So they're not as dark as the slow twitch fibers, but they are darker than the white fibers. And they have a moderate amount of blood flow. So different muscles in the body have different proportions of slow twitch and fast twitch fibers. Think about muscles in your body that you would need to be able to use for long periods of time okay, without them fatiguing. So an example would be your hand and forearm muscles. We can write and type and, and do things with our hands for a really long time before they fatigue. And also muscles involved in maintaining your posture. So your abdominals um, and your lower back muscles. So muscles that you need to use for long periods of time are going to have a higher proportion of slow twitch fibers. And muscles that are going to involve fast, rapid, short duration kinds of movements, they're going to have a higher proportion of fast twitch fibers. Like your shoulders, if you're gonna throw a ball. It's a little bit tricky though, because you can't just say your deltoids always have a certain ratio of slow and fast twitch fibers, because every person is a little bit different. So in general, if you take an average person that doesn't work out very much, let's suppose they walk their dog and, you know, maybe ride a bike once in a while, but they're not athletes, 
okay? They probably have somewhere around 50-50 slow twitch, fast twitch fibers. Maybe 45-55, maybe 55-45. So there is a genetic component as well. So if you were born with a little bit more slow twitch fibers, you may prefer endurance type activities. And if you were born with maybe a little bit more fast twitch fibers, you probably prefer faster speed or strength kinds of activities. And then training plays an important role because as you work those specific muscle types, you're going to continue to develop fibers in that either slow twitch pattern or fast twitch pattern. For many years, there was arguments about, can you convert fibers? And I think the consensus now is that generally, yes, intermediate fibers can become more like fast twitch fibers. They can have a bigger diameter. If you train for speed and strength kinds of activities, you're going to promote the growth of those diameter of fibers. They will use the glycolytic pathway more so than the oxidative pathway and you will um, end up with a higher proportion of fast twitch fibers in those muscles that you're training in that way. Whereas the slow twitch fibers, if you are training to do marathons, then you're going to promote the development of the slow twitch fibers. You'll increase blood flow. There will be more myoglobin you will promote oxidative phosphorylation pathway. So because those intermediate fibers have the ability to do both things, you can train to force them to become more like slow fibers or more like fast fibers. And if you compare the muscle fiber ratios in a marathon runner compared to a power lifter, the marathon runner is gonna have more like 70% slow twitch fibers and the power lifter would have about 70 or 75% fast twitch fibers. So training matters and genetics matter. Your genetics probably set you on a path of preferring certain activities, and then throughout your life, as you do those activities, you develop those muscle fibers. And a few cool things about our meat. If we look at our red meats, beef and lamb, they have the most slow twitch fibers compared to the other meats. So we call them the red meat because they have a higher proportion of myoglobin. Myoglobin is the molecule that holds onto oxygen and makes meat look red. So cows and lambs just walk around very slowly all day long and they don't have a lot of fast twitch fibers. Whereas the chicken breast has more fast twitch fibers. Pork, some people call this the other white meat and some people call it red meat. It has more intermediate fibers, but it also has a fairly decent proportion of slow twitch fibers as well, with that contains myoglobin. Because the red meats contain so much myoglobin, they are the highest source of iron. And fish are a whole different thing. They have some slow twitch fibers around their fins and their tail, but they have a lot less myoglobin compared to the red meats. And fish just float in water, so their meat is quite tender. The last thing that I wanna just show you is, how do you know what kind of muscle fiber you're using? So let's suppose you jump on a treadmill, okay? Everybody has a different fitness level. For some people, walking on a treadmill is difficult. A slow jog might be very difficult. And for other people, you know, a pretty fast run may be not that difficult. So intensity levels are going to depend on your amount of cardiovascular fitness and your amount of muscle strength and muscle conditioning. So you can generally tell if you're using aerobic respiration, slow twitch fibers, if you can breathe easily for that whole period of time that you're exercising. You are generally using anaerobic respiration if breathing is difficult or you get out of breath quickly or you fatigue quickly. Okay, let's just draw a graph. Here we have time and here we have intensity. So this is how much effort you're putting into that activity. Now let's say about 70% of your maximal effort is about the threshold level between anaerobic 
and aerobic activity. So if you jump on a treadmill and you kind of hover here around your 70%, you can last for a period of time. You're primarily going to be using your intermediate fibers because you're going to be using a combination of aerobic and anaerobic. So if you pushed it just a little bit more, you'd be anaerobic, you'd get out of breath and you would fatigue. If you slowed down just a bit more, you could be aerobic and you could last a lot longer and you would fatigue a lot less. So where is the dividing line? If you can do an, uh, an activity for 10 minutes or more and maintain your breathing, you're using your slow twitch aerobic fibers. If you can only do something for less than one or maybe two minutes, you're using primarily the fast fibers. If you're doing an activity somewhere around two to eight or 10 minutes, approximately, then you're going to be using primarily your intermediate filaments. For example, if you're going to do high intensity interval training, where you go up into your anaerobic high intensity more than 70% of your maximal effort, so 80, 85, 90% of your maximal effort, you're primarily stimulating your fast twitch fibers. You're gonna fatigue quickly, but you're going to be stimulating those fibers. And then you bring the intensity back down to an aerobic level, you catch your breath, you use oxygen, right? You use your slow twitch fibers, and then you can go back up. So when you do interval training, you're using all of the fibers. When you're going easy and you can run and breathe or cycle or whatever activity you're doing, if you can breathe easily, that's your slow fibers. And then when you increase the intensity and you increase the speed or the power or the strength, then you're using your fast twitch fibers. So it's very beneficial to stimulate all of them. Okay, one other thing I wanna point out. I have a weight. When we lift weights, we're using fast twitch fibers, right? If I'm using this weight, it's, I'm sitting in a chair. <laughs> if I'm using this weight, am I using fast twitch fibers? What do you think? I can probably lift this weight for a really long time because it's not very heavy. So I'm not actually using any fast twitch fibers, maybe a few. But when the weight is really light, you're not going to engage the fast twitch fibers. Okay, so the intensity of the exercise indicates if you're going to be using slow twitch fibers, intermediate or fast twitch fibers. If you want to engage the fast twitch fibers, you have to use a weight that's going to be stimulating them. So here is a summary chart that is going to compare the slow, intermediate, and fast twitch fiber characteristics.